QuickBooks 3 invoices, discounts, sales tax, and receivables. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email, our phone, and we're on Facebook at St. Louis Test Preparation. I'm going to go back into QuickBooks, and what we see here is this is the Joe's Tree Service Company, the company that we're continuing with. And I pulled up a new invoice, and I want to show you how I got to the invoice. If I go over to my ongoing Excel document here, it says I went to Customer Center, Transactions. I went to Transactions and found Invoices. And then I pulled up the Johnson invoice. So let's get out of this transaction. And let's go back to the very beginning. Customer Center. Customers and Jobs. I'm going to go to Transactions, which is the page on the right. And you'll see the second one down is Invoices. I've got estimates up here, including the estimate I made in the last video. I'm going to go down to Invoices. And I see that I've got an invoice for Joe Johnson that I've created. And that's the one I'm going to pull up now. So I double click on it. Here's my invoice. This invoice is slightly different from the one I created in the first video. The client's Joe Johnson. I've added an address here in the Bill 2 section. I didn't have that on the first invoice I created. Invoice number 2, they're numbered. It's dated 131, January 31st of 11. The information in this box we saw before, the item is the tree removal. That's the service that we perform, which ends up in revenue. The specific task that we're getting paid for is remove 15-foot oak tree by the garage. The amount is $200. What's new is this term section right here, and it says 210 net 30. 210 net 30. And if I jump over to Excel, we explain what 210 net 30 means. It means that the customer, Johnson, gets a 2% discount if the bill is paid within 10 days. In other words, within 10 days of January 31st. The entire bill is due with no discount at the end of 30 days. Now that we've created an invoice with a sales discount, let's go to receive payments. So I go to customer payment. Now I only have one invoice for Joe Johnson right now. So receive from, if I go down to Joe Johnson, we're going to see that the 131 invoice for $200 automatically fills, and we're going to see that there's no payment yet. So what I'm going to do is to fill in $200, and I'm going to put the date as February 5th, which is within 10 days of the payment. And let's just see what happens when I do that. And I'm going to go to, uh, you'll notice in the bottom right left hand corner it says, this customer has discounts available. To apply the discounts, click discount and credits. So because I put in February 5th, I get this notice that the customer has discounts available. So I'm going to kick, click on discounts and credits in the window here. 210 net 30, which means because he paid within the first 10 days, before the February 10th, that is, his discount is 2% of $200 or $4. Now, that's money we're not going to get, and our revenue is going to be reduced, so we have to apply that amount somewhere. So I'm going to go into an expense category. There's really two ways to handle it. I can either create an expense or what's usually done is I use it to reduce revenue. So let's just scroll down here and see if we were given a, an account to use to record a discount. I didn't see an account called sales discount so what I've done is I've gone into the add an account category. So my account type is income, and I called the account sales discount. I made it a sub-account of job income, so it gets grouped with the income account. 
The description here says to record discounts taken by clients on credit sales. So I'm going to save and close it. And I'm going to hit done. When I took that step to make a sales discount an income account, we see an interesting thing happen. It looks as though if I close the discount and credit window, I get this notice over here that says overpayment $4. When you finish, do you want to leave the credit or refund it? The problem is, is that the income account, by definition, is going to be counted as revenue. So it says overpayment of $4 here. Let's see what's going on on the right-hand side. We have amount due of 200 applied amount of 96 the discount or credit applied is $4. And as I said, what's going on over here is the client overpaid by $4. So what do we do with that? We call the client up and say, do you want to leave the credit with us to be used later, or do you want us to refund it to you? I'm going to say we're going to leave the credit. And so now that I have this done, and I've posted a $4 discount because the client paid within 10 days, I'm going to hit Save and Close right here. And I get this warning at the top. A credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. You can print a credit memo, which is a way to send them something saying, hey, by the way, you've got this credit hanging out there. OK to save the transaction, cancel, or go back. I'm going to hit OK. Now that I've recorded a sales discount, I'm wondering what things are going to look like when I go to the profit and loss detail to see how that affected me financially. So if I go to reports, company financial, and I want to look at the details so I can see that sales discount account, I'm going to go to profit and loss detail. And what I see under income here is, here are all my job income accounts under other. And then I see sales discount as a $4 deduction from the income that came in, a $4 deduction from the income that came in. Now, you'll note that these accounts, as they get paid, we're going to reduce accounts receivable. And we'll notice that the split on this account is in undeposited funds. So we're going to have to clear that out of there when we get to the end of the period. I've gone in and created a third invoice. Here's invoice number three, Julie Jones, stump removal. Remove a stump by, by, by the backyard flower bed for $100. And I'm wondering this time, what would happen if we somebody made a partial payment? So now I'm back at the home page. Let's go to receive payment. I'm going to enter Julie Jones. She's only got one invoice for her. And I'm going to say that the amount received was $50. Look what happens when we enter this amount. We get another warning in the bottom left-hand column, just like we got a warning when we were in the uh, discount section. It says, underpayment of $15. When you finish, do you want to leave this amount as an underpayment, meaning that they're going to pay me later, or write off the extra amount, which means I don't think I'm going to get paid. For example, the client went bankrupt. Therefore, I'm going to write it off as an expense, because, which will reduce the revenue that I know I'm not going to receive. So I'm going to leave this as an underpayment. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Save and Close. And we'll see here that it says Amount Due and Applied, and now I'm going to Save and Close. Let's now record the deposits, and we're going to see the complication with the sales discount that went through. If I go to record deposits, I see the two payments that we've dealt with today. One is the Joe Johnson payment, but you're going to see that's for $200, not the discount amount. The discount amount has not been subtracted. And then we see Julie Jones, $150. So let me just click on Joe Johnson. You'll see it posts $200. And if I click on Julie Jones, it posts $250. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll note that I have both 
payments posting. Now we have a problem because Joe Johnson did not pay the entire amount because of the discount. So for the moment, I'm going to post the entire 250 amount, and then I'm going to go back in and deal with the sales discount account. So I'm going to hit Save and Close. And you'll notice that my bank account went up by the $250, so now my cash account is $50,900. The last thing I'd like to do on this video is we've got this sales discount account, and we know that we need to correct the cash balance for the amount of sales discount. If I go to Reports, Company Financial, Profit and Loss Detail, I see under, income, under Job Income, and remember we created Sales Discount as a subsidiary of Job Income, I've got a Sales Discount number that is a credit for reduction in income. It reduces income. So here are all my positive income numbers down here for the jobs that I've done. And here's that negative that's in the sales discount number that reduces our total income. Instead of $1,000 in income, I'm sorry, instead of $950 in income, it's $946 if we subtract out the $4. I'm going to make a journal entry adjustment to change that. Here's why we need to correct the sales discount number, specifically why we need to create an adjusting journal entry. When we started at the beginning of this process, we had job income and we created a receivable entry number three in blue. We also recognize the sales discount as a reduction in the job income and the sales number. And we reduced accounts receivable. And then in brown, we recognize the deposit which went to undeposited funds and then cash, and we reduced the receivable. The problem is right now, we have $104, $104 balance as a credit in accounts receivable instead of 200 If I go to the balance sheet detail, let me back out of here. If I go to reports, company financial balance sheet detail, you'll see that it looks like Julie Jones, instead of still owing us $50, the accounts receivable balance is only 46 and the reason is we've got four dollars too much as a reduction in the accounts receivable. That's what I mean over here when I say that instead of accounts receivable balancing out, we've got four dollars too much of a reduction. The adjusting entry I need to make is in red. I need to increase the accounts receivable so the entire thing balances and it still shows that Julie Jones owes us fifty dollars. And I need to reduce that cash balance because cash is overstated by the amount of the sales discount. So I've come back over to the home page. I'm going to go to Company, Make General Journal Entry. It's going to be numbered. I'm going to make that entry on the 5th because that was when the payment was received for uh, that payment with the discount. And what I said I was going to do was debit accounts receivable. So I'm going to look for, on this line, accounts receivable. I'm going to debit it for $4. And this is to correct the sales discount of $4 in AR for accounts receivable and cash. And I'm going to put that customer in, which is Joe Johnson. And I'm going to go down to my sales discount account, which there's my income account, sales discount. I'm going to credit that for $4. It's going to be the same explanation. It's going to affect Joe Johnson. So. I've increased by debiting accounts receivable. I've decreased that sales discount account. Let's look at our, uh, I'm sorry, cash is the account that I meant to do. Cash is our credit entry. Checking. So debit accounts receivable for credit checking $4. Let's see if I did that right. Debit accounts receivable for credit the check to reduce it to 4. I'm going to jump back over here. I'm going to record my entry. 
when I go to uh, my balance sheet standard, and let me back out of that and go to report company financial balance sheet standard, I see that my account receivable balance is now correctly stated at $50. I see that my checking account total is now $896. If I go into my checking account detail, so if I go to the balance sheet and I put the magnifying glass over checking, I see that $4 reduction on the 5th in the checking account balance. If I put my magnifying glass over accounts receivable, I see the $4 increase in receivables, accounts receivable $4. So now Julie Jones' account correctly owes me $50. And my cash account is correctly stated because I've removed that sales discount number. So essentially I have the T accounts I have here now where my new cash balance for that Joe Johnson payment, that should be a minus, is correctly stated as 196. That was the actual cash received. And you can see that my accounts receivable is $204 on each side. If I just do a sum, and this is what I suggest you do in Excel, if you're trying to do T accounts to figure something out, just do that. Easy way to figure out things. So I now have the actual cash received for that Joe Johnson account is the correct amount. Flipping back to my uh, PowerPoint, that's as far as we're going to get on QuickBooks 3. We have weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. Here's our YouTube channel, Femboid STL. There's a complete list of videos on our website. For live tutoring and chat sessions, you can go to stltest.net. Here's our email and phone. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.